Aramaya and Syriac Estrange La Script Syriac Aramaic Alphabet Aramaic, Classical Syriac, Aramaya, Old Aramaic, Imperial. Aramaic, Square Script, is a Semitic language that originated among the Aramaeans in the ancient region of Syria. During its 3,000-year-long history, Aramaic went through several stages of development. It has served as a language of public life and administration of ancient kingdoms and empires and also as a language of divine worship and religious study. It subsequently branched into several Neo-Aramaic languages that are still spoken in modern times. The Aramaic language belongs to the Northwest group of the Semitic language family, which also includes the Canaanite languages, such as Hebrew, Edomite, Mobite, and Phoenician, as well as Amorite and Ugaritic. Aramaic languages are written in the Aramaic alphabet, which was derived from the Phoenician alphabet. One of the most prominent variants of the Aramaic alphabet, still used in modern times, is the Syriac alphabet. The Aramaic alphabet also became a base for the creation and adaptation of specific writing systems in some other Semitic languages, thus becoming the precursor of the Hebrew alphabet and the Arabic alphabet. The Aramaic languages are now considered endangered, since several dialects are used mainly by the older generations and therefore could go extinct in the near future. However, researchers are working to record and analyze all of the remaining dialects of Neo-Aramaic languages before they are extinguished as spoken languages. Royal Aramaic inscriptions from the Aramean city-states date from 10th century BC, making Aramaic one of the world's oldest recorded living languages. Historically and originally, Aramaic was the language of the Aramaeans, a Semitic-speaking people of the region between the northern Levant and the northern Tigris Valley. By around 1000 BC, the Aramaeans had a string of kingdoms in what is now part of Syria, Lebanon, Jordan, and the fringes of southern Mesopotamia and Anatolia. Aramaic rose to prominence under the Neo-Assyrian Empire, under whose influence Aramaic became a prestige language after being adopted as a lingua franca of the empire. And its use spread throughout Mesopotamia, the Levant and parts of Asia Minor. At its height, Aramaic, having gradually replaced earlier Semitic languages, was spoken in several variants all over what is today Iraq, Syria, Lebanon, Palestine, Israel, Jordan, Kuwait, Eastern Arabia, Bahrain, Sinai, parts of southeast and south-central Turkey, and parts of northwest Iran. Aramaic was the language of Jesus, who spoke the Galilean dialect during his public ministry, as well as the language of several sections of the Hebrew Bible, including parts of the books of Daniel and Ezra, and also the language of the Targum, the Aramaic translation of the Hebrew Bible. The scribes of the Neo-Assyrian bureaucracy had also used Aramaic, and this practice was subsequently inherited by the succeeding Neo-Babylonian Empire, and later by the Achaemenid Empire. Mediated by scribes that had been trained in the language, highly standardized written Aramaic progressively also become the lingua franca of public life, trade and commerce throughout the Achaemenid territories. Wide use of written Aramaic subsequently led to the adoption of the Aramaic alphabet and some Aramaic vocabulary in the Pahlavi scripts, which were used by several Middle Iranian languages. Some variants of Aramaic are also retained as sacred languages by certain religious communities. Most notable among them is classical Syriac, the liturgical language of Syriac Christianity. It is used by several communities, including the Assyrian Church of the East, the Ancient Church of the East, the Chaldean Catholic Church, the Syriac Orthodox Church, the Syriac Catholic Church, the Maronite Church, and also the St. Thomas Christians and Syrian Christians of Kerala, India. One of Aramaic liturgical dialects was Mandaic, which besides becoming a vernacular also remained the liturgical language of Mandaism. Syriac was also the liturgical language of several now extinct Gnostic faiths, such as Manichaeism. Neo-Aramaic languages are still spoken today as a first language by many communities of Syriac Christians, Jews, and Mandeans of the Near East. Most numerously by Christian Syriacs, and with numbers of fluent speakers ranging approximately from 1 million to 2 million. With the main languages among Assyrians being Assyrian Neo-Aramaic, Chaldean Neo-Aramaic and Toroyo, 100,000. Speakers, in addition to Western Neo-Aramaic which persists in only three villages in the anti-Lebanon mountains region in Western Syria. They have retained use of the once dominant lingua franca despite subsequent language shifts experienced throughout the Middle East. The Carpentras was the first ancient inscription ever identified as Aramaic. 
although it was first published in 1704, it was not identified as Aramaic until 1821, when Ulrich Friedrich Kopp complained that previous scholars had left everything to the Phoenicians and nothing to the Aramaeans, as if they could not have written at all. In historical sources, Aramaic language is designated by two distinctive groups of terms, first of them represented by endonymic names, and the other one represented by various exonymic names. Native terms for Aramaic language were derived from the same word root as the name of its original speakers, the ancient Aramaeans. Endonymic forms were also adopted in some other languages, like ancient Hebrew. In the Torah, Aram is used as a proper name of several people including descendants of Shem, Nahor, and Jacob. Unlike in Hebrew, designations for Aramaic language in some other ancient languages were mostly exonymic. In ancient Greek, Aramaic language was most commonly known as the Syrian language, in relation to the native inhabitants of the historical region of Syria. Since the name of Syria itself emerged as a variant of Assyria, the biblical Asher, and Akkadian Asheru, a complex set of semantic phenomena was created, becoming a subject of interest both among ancient writers and modern scholars. Josephus and Strabo both stated that the Syrians called themselves Aramaeans. The Septuagint, the earliest extant full copy of the Hebrew Bible, a Greek translation, used the term Syria and Syrian where the Masoretic text, the earliest extant Hebrew copy of the Bible, uses the terms Aramean and Aramaic. Numerous later Bibles followed the Septuagint's usage, including the King James Version. The connection between Chaldean, Syriac, and Samaritan as Aramaic was first identified in 1679 by German theologian Johann Wilhelm Hilliger. The connection between the name Syrian and Aramaic was made in 1835 by Etienne Marc Quatremier. Ancient Aram, bordering northern Israel and what is now called Syria, is considered the linguistic center of Aramaic, the language of the Aramaeans who settled the area during the Bronze Age c. 3500 BC. The language is often mistakenly considered to have originated within Assyria. In fact, Aramaeans carried their language and writing into Mesopotamia by voluntary migration, by forced exile of conquering armies, and by nomadic Chaldean invasions of Babylonia during the period from 1200 to 1000 BC. The Christian New Testament uses the Koine Greek phrase Beta Rho Alpha Sigma Tau Hebraisti to denote Aramaic. As Aramaic was at that time the language commonly spoken by the Jews. The Hellenized Jewish community of Alexandria instead translated Aramaic to the Syrian tongue. Syriac inscription at the Syro-Malabar Catholic Church's major archbishop's house in Kerala, India during the Neo-Assyrian and Neo-Babylonian empires, Aramaeans, the native speakers of Aramaic, began to settle in greater numbers. At first in Babylonia, and later in Assyria. The influx eventually resulted in the Neo-Assyrian Empire adopting an Akkadian-influenced Imperial Aramaic as the lingua franca of its empire. This policy was continued by the short-lived Neo-Babylonian Empire and Medes, and all three empires became operationally bilingual in written sources, with Aramaic used alongside Akkadian. The Achaemenid Empire continued this tradition, and the extensive influence of these empires led to Aramaic gradually becoming the lingua franca of most of Western Asia, the Arabian Peninsula, Anatolia, the Caucasus, and Egypt. Beginning with the rise of the Rashidun Caliphate in the late 7th century, Arabic gradually replaced Aramaic as the lingua franca of the Near East. However, Aramaic remains a spoken, literary, and liturgical language for local Christians and also some Jews. Aramaic also continues to be spoken by the Assyrians of Iraq, northeastern Syria, southeastern Turkey and northwest Iran, with diaspora communities in Armenia Georgia, Azerbaijan and southern Russia. The Mandeans also continue to use Mandaic Aramaic as a liturgical language, although most now speak Arabic as their first language. There are still also a small number of first language speakers of Western Aramaic varieties in isolated villages in Western Syria. Being in contact with other regional languages, some Aramaic dialects were often engaged in mutual exchange of influences, particularly with Arabic, Iranian, and Kurdish. The turbulence of the last two centuries has seen speakers of first language and literary Aramaic dispersed throughout the world. However, there are a number of sizable Assyrian towns in northern Iraq such as Al-Kash, Bagdida, Bartella, Tescopa, and Telkep, and numerous small villages, where Aramaic is still the main spoken language. And many large cities in this region also have Assyrian Aramaic speaking communities, particularly Mosul, Erbil, Kirkuk, Dohuk, and Al-Hasaka. 
In modern Israel, the only native Aramaic-speaking population are the Jews of Kurdistan, although the language is dying out. However, Aramaic is also experiencing a revival among Maronites in Israel and Jish. Jesus in Jewish Aramaic Aramaic is often spoken of as a single language, but is in reality a group of related languages. Some Aramaic languages differ more from each other than the Romance languages do among themselves. Its long history, extensive literature, and use by different religious communities are all factors in the diversification of the language. Some Aramaic dialects are mutually intelligible, whereas others are not, not unlike the situation with modern varieties of Arabic. Some Aramaic languages are known under different names, for example, Syriac is particularly used to describe the Eastern Aramaic variety used in Christian ethnic communities in Iraq. Southeastern Turkey, Northeastern Syria, and Northwestern Iran, and St. Thomas Christians in India. Most dialects can be described as either Eastern or Western, the dividing line being roughly the Euphrates, or slightly west of it. It is also helpful to draw a distinction between those Aramaic languages that are modern living languages, those that are still in use as literary languages, and those that are extinct and are only of interest to scholars. Although there are some exceptions to this rule, this classification gives modern, middle, and old periods, alongside eastern and western areas, to distinguish between the various languages and dialects that are Aramaic. 11th century book in Syriac Sardo The earliest Aramaic alphabet was based on the Phoenician alphabet. In time, Aramaic developed its distinctive square style. The ancient Israelites and other peoples of Canaan adopted this alphabet for writing their own languages. Thus, it is better known as the Hebrew alphabet today. This is the writing system used in Biblical Aramaic and other Jewish writing in Aramaic. The other main writing system used for Aramaic was developed by Christian communities, a cursive form known as the Syriac alphabet. A highly modified form of the Aramaic alphabet, the Mandaic alphabet, is used by the Mandaeans. In addition to these writing systems, certain derivatives of the Aramaic alphabet were used in ancient times by particular groups, the Nabataean alphabet in Petra and the Palmyrene alphabet in Palmyra. In modern times, Turoyo has sometimes been written in a Latin script. Periodization of historical development of Aramaic language has been the subject of particular interest for scholars, who proposed several types of periodization, based on linguistic, chronological and territorial criteria. Overlapping terminology, used in different periodizations, led to the creation of several polysemic terms, that are used differently among scholars. Terms like, Old Aramaic, Ancient Aramaic, Early Aramaic, Middle Aramaic, Late Aramaic, were used in various meanings. Thus referring to different stages in historical development of Aramaic language. Most commonly used types of periodization are those of Klaus Bayer and Joseph Fitzmaier. Periodization of Klaus Bayer, periodization of Joseph Fitzmaier, recent periodization of Aaron Butts, one of the Bar Rakib inscriptions from Samal. The inscription is in the Somalian language. Aramaic's long history and diverse and widespread use has led to the development of many divergent varieties, which are sometimes considered dialects. Though they have become distinct enough over time that they are now sometimes considered separate languages. Therefore, there is not one singular, static Aramaic language, each time and place rather has had its own variation. The more widely spoken Eastern Aramaic and Mandaic forms are today largely restricted to Assyrian Christian and Mandean Gnostic communities in Iraq, northeastern Syria, northwestern Iran and southeastern Turkey. Whilst the severely endangered Western Neo-Aramaic is spoken by small communities of Aramaeans in Western Syria, and persisted in Mount Lebanon until as late as the 17th century. The term Old Aramaic is used to describe the varieties of the language from its first known use, until the point roughly marked by the rise of the Sasanian Empire, dominating the influential, Eastern dialect region. As such, the term covers over 13 centuries of the development of Aramaic. This vast time span includes all Aramaic that is now effectively extinct. Regarding the earliest forms, Bayer suggests that written Aramaic probably dates from the 11th century BCE, as it is established by the 10th century, to which he dates the oldest inscriptions of northern Syria. Heinrichs uses the less controversial date of the 9th century, for which there is clear and widespread attestation. The central phase in the development of Old Aramaic was its official use by the Achaemenid Empire. The period before this, dubbed Ancient Aramaic, saw the development of the language from being spoken in Aramean city-states to become a major means of communication and diplomacy and trade throughout Mesopotamia, the Levant and Egypt. 
After the fall of the Achaemenid Empire, local vernaculars became increasingly prominent, fanning the divergence of an Aramaic dialect continuum and the development of differing written standards. Ancient Aramaic refers to the earliest known period of the language, from its origin until it becomes the lingua franca of the Fertile Crescent. It was the language of the Aramean city-states of Damascus, Hamath, and Arpad. There are inscriptions that evidence the earliest use of the language, dating from the 10th century BC. These inscriptions are mostly diplomatic documents between Aramean city-states. The alphabet of Aramaic at this early period seems to be based on the Phoenician alphabet, and there is a unity in the written language. It seems that, in time, a more refined alphabet, suited to the needs of the language, began to develop from this in the eastern regions of Aram. Due to increasing Aramean migration eastward, the western periphery of Assyria became bilingual in Akkadian and Aramean at least as early as the mid-9th century BC. As the Neo-Assyrian Empire conquered Aramean lands west of the Euphrates. Tiglath Pileser III made Aramaic the empire's second official language, and it eventually supplanted Akkadian completely. From 700 BC, the language began to spread in all directions, but lost much of its unity. Different dialects emerged in Assyria, Babylonia, the Levant and Egypt. Around 600 BC, Adon, a Canaanite king, used Aramaic to write to an Egyptian pharaoh. Around 500 BC, following the Achaemenid conquest of Mesopotamia under Darius I, Aramaic was adopted by the conquerors as the vehicle for written communication between the different regions of the vast empire with its different peoples and languages. The use of a single official language which modern scholarship has dubbed official Aramaic or imperial Aramaic, can be assumed to have greatly contributed to the astonishing success of the Achaemenids in holding their far-flung empire together for as long as they did. In 1955, Richard Fry questioned the classification of imperial Aramaic as an official language, noting that no surviving edict expressly and unambiguously accorded that status to any particular language. Fry reclassifies imperial Aramaic as the lingua franca of the Achaemenid territories, suggesting then that the Achaemenid era use of Aramaic was more pervasive than generally thought. Imperial Aramaic was highly standardized, its orthography was based more on historical roots than any spoken dialect, and the inevitable influence of Persian gave the language a new clarity and robust flexibility. For centuries after the fall of the Achaemenid Empire, Imperial Aramaic, or a version thereof near enough for it to be recognizable, would remain an influence on the various native Iranian languages. Aramaic script and, as ideograms, Aramaic vocabulary would survive as the essential characteristics of the Pahlavi scripts. One of the largest collections of imperial Aramaic texts is that of the Persepolis fortification tablets, which number about 500. Many of the extant documents witnessing to this form of Aramaic come from Egypt, and Elephantine in particular. Of them, the best known is the story of Ahikar, a book of instructive aphorisms quite similar in style to the biblical book of Proverbs. In addition, current consensus regards the Aramaic portion of the Biblical Book of Daniel as an example of Imperial Aramaic. Achaemenid Aramaic is sufficiently uniform that it is often difficult to know where any particular example of the language was written. Only careful examination reveals the occasional loan word from a local language. A group of 30 Aramaic documents from Bactria have been discovered, and an analysis was published in November 2006. The texts, which were rendered on leather, reflect the use of Aramaic in the 4th century BC Achaemenid administration of Bactria and Sogdia. Biblical Aramaic is the Aramaic found in four discrete sections of the Hebrew Bible, Biblical Aramaic is a somewhat hybrid dialect. It is theorized that some Biblical Aramaic material originated in both Babylonia and Judea before the fall of the Achaemenid dynasty. Biblical Aramaic presented various challenges for writers who were engaged in early Biblical studies. Since the time of Jerome of Stridon, Aramaic of the Hebrew Bible was misnamed as Chaldean. That label remained common in early Aramaic studies, and persisted up into the 19th century. The Chaldean misnomer was eventually abandoned, when modern scholarly analyses showed that Aramaic dialect used in Hebrew Bible was not related to ancient Chaldeans and their language. Coin of Alexander the Great bearing an Aramaic language inscription the Kandahar bilingual rock inscription by the Indian King Ashoka, 3rd century. B.C. at Kandahar, Afghanistan 11th century Hebrew Bible with Targum intercalated between verses of Hebrew text the fall of the Achaemenid Empire. And its replacement with a newly created political order, imposed by Alexander the Great and his Hellenistic successors, marked an important turning point in the history of Aramaic language. 
During the early stages of the post Achaemenid era, public use of Aramaic language was continued, but shared with the newly introduced Greek language. By the year 300 BC, all of the main Aramaic speaking regions came under political rule of the newly created Seleucid Empire that promoted Hellenistic culture and favored Greek language as the main language of public life and administration. During the 3rd century BCE, Greek overtook Aramaic in many spheres of public communication, particularly in highly Hellenized cities throughout the Seleucid domains. However, Aramaic continued to be used, in its post achaemenid form, among upper and literate classes of native Aramaic-speaking communities, and also by local authorities. post achaemenid Aramaic, that bears a relatively close resemblance to that of the Achaemenid period, continued to be used up to the 2nd century BCE. By the end of the 2nd century BC, several variants of post achaemenid Aramaic emerged, bearing regional characteristics. One of them was Hasmonean Aramaic, the official administrative language of Hasmonean Judea, alongside Hebrew which was the language preferred in religious and some other public uses. It influenced the Biblical Aramaic of the Qumran text, and was the main language of non-Biblical theological texts of that community. The major Targums, translations of the Hebrew Bible into Aramaic, were originally composed in Hasmonean Aramaic. It also appears in quotations in the Mishnah and Tosefta, although smoothed into its later context. It is written quite differently from Achaemenid Aramaic, there is an emphasis on writing as words are pronounced rather than using etymological forms. Babylonian Targumic is the later post Achaemenid dialect found in the Targum on Kalos and Targum Jonathan, the official Targums. The original, Hasmonean Targums had reached Babylon sometime in the 2nd or 3rd century AD. They were then reworked according to the contemporary dialect of Babylon to create the language of the standard Targums. This combination formed the basis of Babylonian Jewish literature for centuries to follow. Galilean Targumic is similar to Babylonian Targumic. It is the mixing of literary Hasmonean with the dialect of Galilee. The Hasmonean Targums reached Galilee in the 2nd century AD, and were reworked into this Galilean dialect for local use. The Galilean Targum was not considered an authoritative work by other communities, and documentary evidence shows that its text was amended. From the 11th century AD onwards, once the Babylonian Targum had become normative, the Galilean version became heavily influenced by it. Babylonian Documentary Aramaic is a dialect in use from the 3rd century AD onwards. It is the dialect of Babylonian private documents, and, from the 12th century, all Jewish private documents are in Aramaic. It is based on Hasmonean with very few changes. This was perhaps because many of the documents in BDA are legal documents, the language in them had to be sensible throughout the Jewish community from the start, and Hasmonean was the old standard. Nabatean Aramaic was the written language of the Arab kingdom of Nabatea, whose capital was Petra. The kingdom controlled the region to the east of the Jordan River, the Negev, the Sinai Peninsula and the northern Hajaz, and supported a wide-ranging trade network. The Nabateans used Imperial Aramaic for written communications, rather than their native Arabic. Nabatean Aramaic developed from Imperial Aramaic, with some influence from Arabic, El is often turned into An, and there are some Arabic loanwords. Arabic influence on Nabatean Aramaic increased over time. Some Nabatean Aramaic inscriptions date from the early days of the kingdom, but most datable inscriptions are from the first four centuries AD. The language is written in a cursive script which was the precursor to the Arabic alphabet. After annexation by the Romans in 106 AD, most of Nabatea was subsumed into the province of Arabia Petria, the Nabateans turned to Greek for written communications, and the use of Aramaic declined. Palmyrene Aramaic is the dialect that was in use in the Syriac city-state of Palmyra in the Syrian desert from 44 BC to 274 AD. It was written in a rounded script, which later gave way to cursive Estrangela. Like Nabatean, Palmyrene was influenced by Arabic, but to a much lesser degree. The use of written Aramaic in the Achaemenid bureaucracy also precipitated the adoption of Aramaic scripts to render a number of Middle Iranian languages. Moreover, many common words, including even pronouns, particles, numerals, and auxiliaries, continued to written as Aramaic words even when writing Middle Iranian languages. In time, in Iranian usage, these Aramaic words became disassociated from the Aramaic language and came to be understood as signs, much like the symbol and as read as and in English and the original Latin ed is now no longer obvious. Under the early 3rd century BC Parthians Assassids, 
whose government used Greek but whose native language was Parthian, the Parthian language and its Aramaic-derived writing system both gained prestige. This in turn also led to the adoption of the name Pahlavi for that writing system. The Persian Sassanids, who succeeded the Parthian Assassids in the mid-3rd century AD, subsequently inherited slash adopted the Parthian-mediated Aramaic-derived writing system for their own Middle Iranian ethnolect as well. That particular Middle Iranian dialect, Middle Persian, I. E. The language of Persia proper, subsequently also became a prestige language. Following the conquest of the Sassanids by the Arabs in the 7th century, the Aramaic-derived writing system was replaced by Arabic script in all but Zoroastrian usage, which continued to use the name Pahlavi for the Aramaic-derived writing system and went on to create the bulk of all Middle Iranian literature in that writing system. Mandaic magical demon trap the dialects mentioned in the previous section were all descended from Achaemenid Aramaic. However, some other regional dialects also continued to exist alongside these, often as simple, spoken variants of Aramaic. Early evidence for these vernacular dialects is known only through their influence on words and names in a more standard dialect. However, some of those regional dialects became written languages by the 2nd century BC. These dialects reflect a stream of Aramaic that is not directly dependent on Achaemenid Aramaic. And they also show a clear linguistic diversity between eastern and western regions. Eastern dialects of the post Achaemenid period in the eastern regions, dialects like Pamir in Aramaic and Assassid Aramaic gradually merged with the regional vernacular dialects. Thus creating languages with a foot in Achaemenid and a foot in regional Aramaic. In the Kingdom of Osrin, founded in 132 BCE and centered in Edessa, the regional dialect became the official language, Edessan Aramaic, that later came to be known as Classical Syriac. On the upper reaches of the Tigris, East Mesopotamian Aramaic flourished, with evidence from the regions of Hatra and Asur. Tatian, the author of the Gospel Harmony the Diatessaron came from Assyria, and perhaps wrote his work in East Mesopotamian rather than Syriac or Greek. In Babylonia, the regional dialect was used by the Jewish community, Jewish Old Babylonian. This everyday language increasingly came under the influence of Biblical Aramaic and Babylonian Targumic. The written form of Mandaic, the language of the Mandean religion, was descended from the Assassid Chancery script. Western dialects of the post Achaemenid period The Western regional dialects of Aramaic followed a similar course to those of the East. They are quite distinct from the Eastern dialects and Imperial Aramaic. Aramaic came to coexist with Canaanite dialects, eventually completely displacing Phoenician in the 1st century BC and Hebrew around the turn of the 4th century AD. The form of late Old Western Aramaic used by the Jewish community is best attested. And is usually referred to as Jewish Old Palestinian. Its oldest form is Old East Jordanian, which probably comes from the region of Caesarea Philippi. This is the dialect of the oldest manuscript of the Book of Enoch. The next distinct phase of the language is called Old Judean lasting into the 2nd century AD. Old Judean literature can be found in various inscriptions and personal letters, preserved quotations in the Talmud and receipts from Qumran. Josephus' first, non-extant edition of his The Jewish War was written in Old Judean. The Old East Jordanian dialect continued to be used into the 1st century AD by pagan communities living to the east of the Jordan. Their dialect is often then called Pagan Old Palestinian, and it was written in a cursive script somewhat similar to that used for Old Syriac. A Christian Old Palestinian dialect may have arisen from the pagan one, and this dialect may be behind some of the Western Aramaic tendencies found in the otherwise Eastern Old Syriac Gospels. Languages during Jesus' lifetime It is generally believed by Christian scholars that in the first century, Jews in Judea primarily spoke Aramaic with a decreasing number using Hebrew as their first language. Though many learned Hebrew as a liturgical language. Additionally, Koine Greek was the lingua franca of the Near Eastern trade, among the Hellenized classes, and in the Roman administration. Latin, the language of the Roman army and higher levels of administration, had almost no impact on the linguistic landscape. In addition to the formal, literary dialects of Aramaic based on Hasmonean and Babylonian, there were a number of colloquial Aramaic dialects. Seven Western Aramaic varieties were spoken in the vicinity of Judea in Jesus' time. They were probably distinctive yet mutually intelligible. Old Judean was the prominent dialect of Jerusalem and Judea. The region of Ein Gedi spoke the Southeast Judean dialect. Samaria had its distinctive Samaritan Aramaic, where the consonants e, heth and i and all became pronounced as aleph. 
Galilean Aramaic, the dialect of Jesus' home region, is only known from a few place names, the influences on Galilean Targumic, some rabbinic literature and a few private letters. It seems to have a number of distinctive features, diphthongs are never simplified into monophthongs. East of the Jordan, the various dialects of East Jordanian were spoken. In the region of Damascus and the anti-Lebanon mountains, Damascene Aramaic was spoken. Finally, as far north as Aleppo, the western dialect of Arandis Aramaic was spoken. The three languages, especially Hebrew and Aramaic, influenced one another through loanwords and semantic loans. Hebrew words entered Jewish Aramaic. Most were mostly technical religious words, but a few were everyday words like S would. Conversely, Aramaic words, such as mammon wealth, were borrowed into Hebrew, and Hebrew words acquired additional senses from Aramaic. For instance, Hebrew raw ui seen borrowed the sense worthy, seemly from the Aramaic hertzi meaning seen and worthy. The Greek of the New Testament preserves some Semiticisms, including transliterations of Semitic words. Some are Aramaic, like Talita, which represents the noun Talita, and others may be either Hebrew or Aramaic like Rabunai, which means my master slash great one slash teacher in both languages. Other examples, the 2004 film The Passion of the Christ used Aramaic for much of its dialogue, specially reconstructed by a scholar, William Folko, S.J. where the appropriate words were no longer known. He used the Aramaic of Daniel and 4th century Syriac and Hebrew as the basis for his work. The 3rd century AD is taken as the threshold between Old and Middle Aramaic. During that century, the nature of the various Aramaic languages and dialects began to change. The descendants of Imperial Aramaic ceased to be living languages, and the Eastern and Western regional languages began to develop vital new literatures. Unlike many of the dialects of Old Aramaic, much is known about the vocabulary and grammar of Middle Aramaic. Only two of the Old Eastern Aramaic languages continued into this period. In the north of the region, Old Syriac transitioned into Middle Syriac. In the south, Jewish Old Babylonian became Jewish Middle Babylonian. The post Achaemenid, Assassid dialect became the background of the new Mandaic language. Syriac Aramaic 9th century Syriac A strange Le manuscript of John Chrysostom's homily on the Gospel of John Syriac Aramaic is the literary, liturgical and often spoken language of Syriac Christianity. It originated by the 1st century AD in the region of Osrin, centered in Edessa, but its golden age was the 4th to 8th centuries. This period began with the translation of the Bible into the language, the Peshitta, and the masterful prose and poetry of Ephraim the Syrian. Classical Syriac became the language of the Church of the East, and the Syriac Orthodox Church. Missionary activity led to the spread of Syriac from Mesopotamia and Persia, into Central Asia, India, and China. Jewish Babylonian Aramaic Jewish Middle Babylonian is the language employed by Jewish writers in Babylonia between the 4th and the 11th century. It is most commonly identified with the language of the Babylonian Talmud and of post-Talmudic Geonic literature, which are the most important cultural products of Babylonian Judaism. The most important epigraphic sources for the dialect are the hundreds of incantation bowls written in Jewish Babylonian Aramaic. Mandaic Aramaic The Mandaic language, spoken by the Mandeans of Iraq, is a sister dialect to Jewish Babylonian Aramaic, though it is both linguistically and culturally distinct. Classical Mandaic is the language in which the Mandeans' Gnostic religious literature was composed. It is characterized by a highly phonetic orthography. The dialects of Old Western Aramaic continued with Jewish Middle Palestinian, Samaritan Aramaic and Christian Palestinian. Of these three, only Jewish Middle Palestinian continued as a written language. Samaritan Aramaic The Samaritan Aramaic is earliest attested by the documentary tradition of the Samaritans that can be dated back to the 4th century. Its modern pronunciation is based on the form used in the 10th century. Jewish Palestinian Aramaic Hebrew and Aramaic in parallel in a 1299 Hebrew Bible held by the Bodleian Library in 135, after the Bar Kokhba revolt, many Jewish leaders, expelled from Jerusalem, moved to Galilee. The Galilean dialect thus rose from obscurity to become the standard among Jews in the West. This dialect was spoken not only in Galilee, but also in the surrounding parts. It is the linguistic setting for the Jerusalem Talmud, Palestinian Targumim, and Midrashim. The standard vowel pointing for the Hebrew Bible, the Tiberian system, was developed by speakers of the Galilean dialect of Jewish Middle Palestinian. Classical Hebrew vocalization, therefore, and representing the Hebrew of this period, 
probably reflects the contemporary pronunciation of this Aramaic dialect. Middle Judean Aramaic, the descendant of Old Judean Aramaic, was no longer the dominant dialect, and was used only in southern Judea. Likewise, Middle East Jordanian Aramaic continued as a minor dialect from Old East Jordanian Aramaic. The inscriptions in the synagogue at Dura Europo are either in Middle East Jordanian or Middle Judean. Christian Palestinian Aramaic This was the language of the Christian Melkite community from the 5th to the 8th century. As a liturgical language, it was used up to the 13th century. It has also been called Melkite Aramaic and Palestinian Syriac. The language itself comes from Old Christian Palestinian Aramaic, but its writing conventions were based on early Middle Syriac, and it was heavily influenced by Greek. For example, the name Jesus, although Yeswa in Jewish Aramaic, and Iso in Syriac, is written Yesus in Christian Palestinian. Territorial distribution of Neo-Aramaic languages in the Near East as the Western Aramaic languages of the Levant and Lebanon have become nearly extinct. In non-liturgical usage, the most prolific speakers of Aramaic dialects today are predominantly ethnic Assyrian Eastern Neo-Aramaic speakers. The most numerous being the Northeastern Neo-Aramaic speakers of Mesopotamia. This includes speakers of Assyrian Neo-Aramaic, Chaldean Neo-Aramaic, and Turoil. Having largely lived in remote areas as insulated communities for over a millennium, the remaining speakers of modern Aramaic dialects, such as the Assyrians and the Aramaeans, escaped. The linguistic pressures experienced by others during the large-scale language shifts that saw the proliferation of other tongues among those who previously did not speak them. Most recently the Arabization of the Middle East and North Africa by Arabs beginning with the early Muslim conquests of the 7th century. A man in East Syriac Aramaic Modern Eastern Aramaic exists in a wide variety of dialects and languages. There is significant difference between the Aramaic spoken by Christians, Jews, and Mandians. The Christian varieties are often called Modern Syriac, being deeply influenced by the old literary and liturgical language, the Classical Syriac. However, they also have roots in numerous, previously unwritten, local Aramaic varieties, and are not purely the direct descendants of the language of Ephraim the Syrian. The varieties are not all mutually intelligible. The principal Christian varieties are Assyrian Neo-Aramaic and Chaldean Neo-Aramaic, both belonging to the group of Northeastern Neo-Aramaic languages. The Judeo-Aramaic languages are now mostly spoken in Israel, and most are facing extinction. The Jewish varieties that have come from communities that once lived between Lake Ermia and Mosul are not all mutually intelligible. In some places, for example Ermia, Assyrian Christians and Jews speak mutually unintelligible varieties of modern Eastern Aramaic in the same place. In others, the Nineveh plains around Mosul for example, the varieties of these two ethnic communities are similar enough to allow conversation. Modern Central Neo-Aramaic, being in between Western Neo-Aramaic and Eastern Neo-Aramaic, is generally represented by Turoyo, the language of the Assyrians of tur A related language, Mlaso, has recently become extinct. Mandeans living in the Khuzestan province of Iran and scattered throughout Iraq, speak modern Mandaic. It is quite distinct from any other Aramaic variety. Mandaic numbers some 50,000 to 75,000 people, but it is believed the Mandaic language may now be spoken fluently by as few as 5,000 people, with other Mandeans having varying degrees of knowledge. Very little remains of Western Aramaic. Its only remaining vernacular is the Western Neo-Aramaic language, that is still spoken in the villages of Malula, Al-Sarka, and Jubadan on Syria's side of the anti-Lebanon mountains. As well as by some people who migrated from these villages, to Damascus and other larger towns of Syria. All these speakers of modern Western Aramaic are fluent in Arabic as well. Other Western Aramaic languages, like Jewish Palestinian Aramaic and Samaritan Aramaic, are preserved only in liturgical and literary usage. Each dialect of Aramaic has its own distinctive pronunciation, and it would not be feasible here to go into all these properties. Aramaic has a phonological palette of 25 to 40 distinct phonemes. Some modern Aramaic pronunciations lack the series of emphatic consonants, and some have borrowed from the inventories of surrounding languages, particularly Arabic, Azerbaijani, Kurdish, Persian, and Turkish. As with most Semitic languages, Aramaic can be thought of as having three basic sets of vowels, these vowel groups are relatively stable, but the exact articulation of any individual is most dependent on its consonantal setting. The open vowel is an open near front unrounded vowel. It usually has a back counterpart, and a front counterpart. 
There is much correspondence between these vowels between dialects. There is some evidence that Middle Babylonian dialects did not distinguish between the short A and short E. In West Syriac dialects, and possibly Middle Galilean, the long A became the O sound. The open E and back A are often indicated in writing by the use of the letters Alaf or He. The close front vowel is the long I. It has a slightly more open counterpart, the long E, as in the final vowel of cafe. Both of these have shorter counterparts, which tend to be pronounced slightly more open. Thus, the short close E corresponds with the open E in some dialects. The close front vowels usually use the consonant Y as a mater lectionis. The close back vowel is the long U. It has a more open counterpart, the long O, like the vowel in show. There are shorter, and thus more open, counterparts to each of these, with the short close O sometimes corresponding with the long open A. The close back vowels often use the consonant W to indicate their quality. Two basic diphthongs exist, an open vowel followed by Y, and an open vowel followed by W. These were originally full diphthongs, but many dialects have converted them to E and O respectively. The so-called emphatic consonants cause all vowels to become mid-centralized. The various alphabets used for writing Aramaic languages have 22 letters. Some of these letters, though, can stand for two or three different sounds. Aramaic classically uses a series of lightly contrasted plosives and fricatives, each member of a certain pair is written with the same letter of the alphabet in most writing systems. And are near allophones. A distinguishing feature of Aramaic phonology is the presence of emphatic consonants. These are consonants that are pronounced with the root of the tongue retracted, with varying degrees of pharyngealization and velarization. Using their alphabetic names, these emphatics are, ancient Aramaic may have had a larger series of emphatics, and some Neo-Aramaic languages definitely do. Not all dialects of Aramaic give these consonants their historic values. Overlapping with a set of emphatics are the guttural consonants. They include het and ain from the emphatic set, and ad al apani. Aramaic classically has a set of four sibilants, in addition to these sets, Aramaic has the nasal consonants m and n, and the approximants are, l, y and w. Six broad features of sound change can be seen as dialect differentials, as with other Semitic languages, Aramaic morphology is based on the consonantal root. The root generally consists of two or three consonants and has a basic meaning, for example, KTD has the meaning of writing. This is then modified by the addition of vowels and other consonants to create different nuances of the basic meaning. Aramaic nouns and adjectives are inflected to show gender, number and state. Aramaic has two grammatical genders, masculine and feminine. The feminine absolute singular is often marked by the ending, ah. Nouns can be either singular or plural, but an additional dual number exists for nouns that usually come in pairs. The dual number gradually disappeared from Aramaic over time and has little influence in Middle and Modern Aramaic. Aramaic nouns and adjectives can exist in one of three states. To a certain extent, these states correspond to the role of articles in cases in the Indo-European languages, the absolute state is the basic form of a noun. In early forms of Aramaic, the absolute state expresses indefiniteness, comparable to the English indefinite article A, and can be used in most syntactic roles. However, by the Middle Aramaic period, its use for nouns had been widely replaced by the emphatic state. The construct state is a form of the noun used to make possessive constructions. In the masculine singular, the form of the construct is often the same as the absolute, but it may undergo vowel reduction in longer words. The feminine construct and masculine construct plural are marked by suffixes. Unlike a genitive case, which marks the possessor, the construct state is marked on the possessed. This is mainly due to Aramaic word order, possess const, possessor abs, slash emf, are treated as a speech unit, with the first unit employing the construct state to link it to the following word. In Middle Aramaic, the use of the construct state for all but stock phrases begins to disappear. The emphatic or determined state is an extended form of the noun that functions similarly to the definite article. It is marked with a suffix. Although its original grammatical function seems to have been to mark definiteness, it is used already in Imperial Aramaic to mark all important nouns, even if they should be considered technically indefinite. This practice developed to the extent that the absolute state became extraordinarily rare in later varieties of Aramaic. Whereas other Northwest Semitic languages, like Hebrew, have the absolute and construct states, the emphatic slash determined state is a unique feature to Aramaic. Case endings, as in Ugaritic, 
probably existed in a very early stage of the language, and glimpses of them can be seen in a few compound proper names. However, as most of those cases were expressed by short final vowels, they were never written, and the few characteristic long vowels of the masculine plural accusative and genitive are not clearly evidenced in inscriptions. Often, the direct object is marked by a prefixed, l if it is definite. Adjectives agree with their nouns in number and gender but agree in state only if used attributively. Predicative adjectives are in the absolute state regardless of the state of their noun. Thus, an attributive adjective to an emphatic noun, as in the phrase the good king, is written also in the emphatic state makataba, king emph. Good emph. Dot. In comparison, the predicative adjective, as in the phrase the king is good, is written in the absolute state makatab, king emph. Good abs. Dot. The final, a uh, in a number of these suffixes is written with the letter aleph. However, some Jewish Aramaic texts employ the letter he for the feminine absolute singular. Likewise, some Jewish Aramaic texts employ the Hebrew masculine absolute singular suffix, im instead of, in. The masculine determined plural suffix, aya, has an alternative version, e. The alternative is sometimes called the gentilic plural for its prominent use in ethnonyms. This alternative plural is written with the letter aleph, and came to be the only plural for nouns and adjectives of this type in Syriac and some other varieties of Aramaic. The masculine construct plural, e, is written with yod. In Syriac and some other variants this ending is diphthong as to i. Possessive phrases in Aramaic can either be made with the construct state or by linking two nouns with the relative particle, di circumflex. As the use of the construct state almost disappears from the Middle Aramaic period on, the latter method became the main way of making possessive phrases. For example, the various forms of possessive phrases are, kabat mauta, the oldest construction, also known as smikat, the possessed object is in the construct state, the possessor. Is in the emphatic state tebata di mauta, both words are in the emphatic state and the relative particle, di circumflex, is used to mark the relationship ktabtahd malta, both words are in the emphatic state. And the relative particle is used, but the possessed is given an anticipatory, pronominal ending the queen. In modern Aramaic, the last form is by far the most common. In biblical Aramaic, the last form is virtually absent. The Aramaic verb has gradually evolved in time and place, varying between varieties of the language. Verb forms are marked for person, number, gender, tense, mood and voice. Aramaic also employs a system of conjugations, or verbal stems, to mark intensive and extensive developments in the lexical meaning of verbs. Aspectual tense Aramaic has two proper tenses, perfect and imperfect. These were originally aspectual, but developed into something more like a preterite in future. The perfect is unmarked, while the imperfect uses various preformatives that vary according to person, number and gender. In both tenses the third person singular masculine is the unmarked form from which others are derived by addition of a formatives. In the chart below, the first form given is the usual form in Imperial Aramaic, while the second is Classical Syriac. Conjugations or verbal stems like other Semitic languages, Aramaic employs a number of derived verb stems, to extend the lexical coverage of verbs. The basic form of the verb is called the ground stem, or g-stem. Following the tradition of medieval Arabic grammarians, it is more often called the pal, using the form of the Semitic root pl, meaning to do. This stem carries the basic lexical meaning of the verb. By doubling of the second radical, or root letter, the d stem or pale is formed. This is often an intensive development of the basic lexical meaning. For example, kil means he killed, whereas kadal means he slew. The precise relationship in meaning between the two stems differs for every verb. A preformative, which can be, ha, a or, sa, creates the sea stem or variously the hapel, apple or sapel. This is often an extensive or causative development of the basic lexical meaning. For example, ta means he went astray, whereas adi means he deceived. The sapel is the least common variant of the sea stem. Because this variant is standard in Akkadian, it is possible that its use in Aramaic represents loanwords from that language. The difference between the variants Happel and Apple appears to be the gradual dropping of the initial H sound in later Old Aramaic. This is noted by the respelling of the older He preformative with Aleph. These three conjugations are supplemented with three further derived stems, produced by the preformative, Hit or, Et. The loss of the initial H sound occurs similarly to that in the form above. 
These three derived stems are the GT stem, HITPAL or EATPAL, the DT stem, HITPAL or EATPAL, and the CT stem, HITHAPAL, EDAPAL, HISTAPAL or ESTAPAL. Their meaning is usually reflexive, but later became passive. However, as with other stems, actual meaning differs from verb to verb. Not all verbs use all of these conjugations, and, in some, the G stem is not used. In the chart below, the first form given is the usual form in Imperial Aramaic, while the second is Classical Syriac. In Imperial Aramaic, the participle began to be used for a historical present. Perhaps under influence from other languages, Middle Aramaic developed a system of composite tenses, allowing for narrative that is more vivid. The syntax of Aramaic usually follows the order verb subject object. Imperial Aramaic, however, tended to follow a SOV pattern, which was the result of Persian syntactic influence. Thanks for watching.